You are all welcome to this Sunday's reflection in which we shall mainly focus on those Christian practices we need to consider in order to ensure a wholesome witness, wholesome discipleship. Moses, in his later years, experienced a lot of problems and difficulties with the people he was leading, and it became a bit too difficult for him to be faithful to the ministry he had embraced from God. So out of great difficulty, we see in the book of Numbers in chapter 11, verses 10 to 15, Moses is somehow complaining to God that he is leading a people who are hard-hearted, a people he never gave birth to. And because of this hardship, he requests for helpers. And on a day appointed by God, and this is where today's reading begins, the elected or appointed seven leaders were gathered in the tent of meeting, and these people received the Spirit. Upon receiving the Spirit, they began acting in the name of God. They prophesied. To their surprise, as we have heard, there were two extra elders who also sir, began prophesying, yet they were not with them in the tent. They were outside the elect. They were outside the establishment, not part of the group. So when this happened, Joshua and others asked Moses to stop these people because they were not part of them. And this is what John brings about in the gospel, the first portion of the gospel. We saw a man healing in your name, and we stopped him because he does not follow us. Those who are outside the establishment can as well receive the Spirit. Sometimes we think God has protocol issues. There are no protocol concerns with God's Spirit. The Spirit blows wherever He wills. And he can make anyone perform the works of God freely. So even you, the baptized, as well, can participate in some way in doing works of God. And the Spirit of God is given abundantly and freely to all of you. So there should be no fear when we gather in Sega Hall that a parishioner can't lead the grace for the meal there, that you wait for the priest to come and lead. Please go ahead and pray. Pray. <laughs> you also pray in your homes. Why do you wait for Musoloza to come and lead the, the grace for food? You can lead that one. It's not mass. The Spirit is there to lead you through that. So, Medad and Eldad surprised these men, the chosen ones, 
they were prophesying correctly. And Moses has responded rightly that are you jealous because of me? What if God made all people prophets? And that was his wish, that everyone could speak in the name of God. So when it comes to receiving the Spirit, there are no absentees. As long as one's heart is open to the Spirit and is full of goodwill and is focused on the kingdom of God, God will act through you. God will use you for his particular purposes at liberty. So we should be confident to go on ahead with the ministries we have been given or chosen for or picked ourselves, especially in the past, on the past sign of stewardship. The Spirit is there to lead you. Cooperate with him. So, no one should say, this is my thing. No, it is the thing of God, where God has to act freely and bring out his goodness as he chooses. So, we welcome all of you who have embraced ministries since our Stewardship Sunday. And please, feel confident the Spirit will lead you in the fulfillment of those missions. When we are working for God, we are not competitors. We are co-workers and we are allies. This is what, what was missing in the minds of the group of the elect, the 70. This one made me a little happy when I see 70 men in the tent and the two more outside the tent. They are corresponding with the 72 disciples our Lord sent to go out to places where he was going to minister. So the number somehow got filled up. The community can at times choose elders to minister. Somehow, somewhere, they can miss out on some whom God has already chosen. So he fills up the gap. Those are the two, to make 72 in the New Testament. Let's be confident God is with us, that we are all co-workers and allies. So if we keep this in mind, as disciples, there will be no tension, no irritation, no rejection, and no special concerns. I think this is also the mind of the, the gospel today, the first portion of the gospel, that we should let those with the gifts of the Spirit to act in the name of Christ. After all, no one has possession of Christ's name. If someone acts in the name of Christ, let him or her go ahead. The Lord, the Lord is with him or her. As long as whatever is being put in place is for the kingdom of God. So that's, that's one of the things we have to consider in our discipleship. That's one of the good practices we should maintain. Co-worker, co-working and working as allies for the kingdom of God. Secondly, even the little things that others can do for us who are sent. Whoever gives just a glass of water to you because you are my disciple. So those who are elected for mission are not complete in themselves. They also need to be ministered to by those they are preaching to. So the Spirit of God who sends them to work for the people, 
the same spirit can touch the hearts of those to whom they are preaching to return goodness to the preachers. So let those tiny actions, however small they might be, not be despised. Because through those actions, the kingdom of God is attained. So let us be keen on however little an action might be, even actions of little children. Actions of little children. In the house, if a kid comes and brings you a piece of whatever, please receive it well. Receive it well. She or he is ministering to you. That is the spirit teaching that little one to be of help to another. St. James, in the second reading, has helped us also to enter into the same system. He's asking us, let alone the tough language he has used, he's only telling us that God has gifted us with assets, spiritual and material. Let us use these assets, spiritual and material, to advance the kingdom and to come to the aid of our brothers and sisters. That's in brief what St. James is telling us in the second reading. That is also a good practice in our discipleship. Then the gospel comes in the last section. He's warning us that as we do ministry, let's not play about with temptations. Temptations that come from outside in the form of scandals, those should be handled with great seriousness. No compromise. Scandal is bad. Scandal kills the faith. Scandal misguides motivation. Scandal is deadly and can lead to total spiritual destruction. So the Lord even concludes with a sharp word that whomever scandalizes others, it's better a millstone is tied around the neck and be drowned in the water. That's one of the most miserable ways of ending life and of getting off the surface of the earth. That's not good. That's not good. We are chosen as disciples not to end in that way. So let us avoid scandal and help others who are causing scandal to convert. We know the scandals that have hit the church and up to now are leading us into great, great sadness. There should be no moment of return to those bad situations. So as we condemn scandal in others, we also have to be serious about what is taking place in us, in me, as well. My eye, my hands, and my feet. What am I doing with these assets God has given me? Are they also not leading me to self-destruction? My eye can lead me to destruction. If it is the ear, it can lead me to destruction. If it's a CD that causes me to sin, please destroy it. If it is the internet, apply a blocking app to the internet. Deal done. If it is a book, put it in the fire. That's what the Lord means by pluck it off, cut it off. So you shouldn't get knives and begin cutting off others' hands. No. Burn the CD. Put blocking gadgets on, on the internet. Please burn the evil books you are reading. I don't say you are reading them. But please, put them on fire. Be gone. That's what it means to be pure at heart. So as we 
take seriously scandals given to us by others, we also have to be serious about our own salvation by driving out all occasions of sin within us. That's another good practice of discipleship. So as we work as co-workers and allies in ministry, as we use well the resources God has given to us in ministry, as we receive with gratitude those extensions of appreciation from others, however little they may be, and as we avoid occasions of sin and help others to come out of them, we shall be doing a good ministry as disciples of the Lord. And these are the best practices the Lord is inviting us to focus on today. The Lord be with you.